The Plastic Soldier Company make an excellent and very affordable range of wargaming miniatures for World War II tabletop games in 15mm and 172nd scale. This is their 15mm Panzer Mark V Panther Box, which contains five vehicles. This is the standard way to buy these vehicles, but individual sprues are also available from Plastic Soldier Company if you just need an individual vehicle to complete a unit. The sprue for a Plastic Soldier Company Panther includes two different types of hull as well as different mantlets, exhaust, couplers and other options for making the different variants. This kit can be used to make the three main models of Panther, the D, A and G variants. There aren't any stowage options but there are some spare track links. As usual for Plastic Soldier Company products, the detail is good and the moulding is very crisp and clean. Parts fit is great with no gaps or flash anywhere. The parts count for PSC kits are higher than resin and metal gamers are used to, but being plastic makes these kits easy to work with and modify. In this regard they're more like simple model kits, but the level of detail here is worth the extra effort. The instruction sheet shows the parts assembly and also identifies which parts on the sprue are for what variants. Unfortunately there are some issues here. The initial production version of the Panther was the Model D, which is incorrectly listed on the instruction sheet as the Model A. The Panther D was manufactured between January and September 1943, and about 840 were built. This model of the Panther has the earlier dustbin commander's coupler, angled rear hull sponsons, early twin exhaust, and simple vision ports on the hull front. There was considerable variation during the Panther D production run, and early versions can have the smoke discharges fitted, and some very early turrets have a small circular shell loading port on the left hand side. This detail isn't available in the kit, but would be fairly simple to add. Some later Panther Ds were fitted with the later cast coupler, but following the standard guide in the instructions will build you a standard Panther D. The second Panther variant was the Model A, which is identified as the Model D on the instruction sheet. This version was manufactured between August 1943 and June 1944, with over 2,000 of this model built. Unfortunately, the instructions and kit parts are not entirely correct to build a standard Panther A, but luckily it only takes some minor modifications to correct. The Panther A uses the same angled rear hull with the angled driver and radio operator doors as the earlier Model D. However, the A model Panther introduced the armoured ball mount for the radio operator's MG34 to replace the simple rectangular armoured door. Only a very few early Panther A's retained the armoured door, so this means that following the kit instructions will not build you a standard Panther A. Luckily, with a plastic kit, this is easy to correct. Simply use a hobby knife to carve off the armoured door on the hull front and drill a small hole to take the armoured ball mount locating pin. Because the ball mount contained a telescopic sight, the front vision block of the radio operator's position was eliminated, so this can be removed as well. The gun mantlet will also need to be slightly modified to represent a Model A. The Panther A uses the same mantlet as the Model D, but the binocular gun sight was replaced with a monocular version. This means you should use modelling putty to seal up the outer of the two sighting holes in the mantlet. Once you've fitted the ball MG and modified the mantlet, complete the Panther A with the cast coupler and optionally the later multi-pipe exhaust. The final version shown in the instructions is the Panther G. This version is identified correctly in the instructions. Almost 3,000 of this version were built between March 1944 and the end of the war. The Panther G has the later hull with the simplified side panel armour. Panther Gs can be fitted with either the normal mantlet with one sight hole filled in as for the A model, or with the later mantlet which has an armoured chin added to stop incoming rounds being deflected down onto the top of the hull or the turret ring. The gun barrel cleaning rod tube is shown positioned on the left side of the hull, but in some later Panther Gs this was moved to the rear of the engine deck. This would be a simple modification to make if desired. So the Plastic Soldier Company Panther Box does allow you to make up the three major variants of this vehicle with only some minor issues with the instructions and some minor modifications required to make a typical Panther A. I think the Plastic Soldier Company range a great value for money and being able to build all of these variants from one box is great. Unfortunately I don't have a Battlefront Plastic Panther to compare it to so I can't make any comments about how well these would mix in a unit. The Battlefront Plastic Panthers have the added advantage that they can be built as a Jag Panther as well. 
Given I've built each of the different variants out of my Plastic Soldier Company Panther box, it's going to be a strange unit, but now I just need to find the time to paint them.